Welcome to Transformed by Grace, an in-depth Bible study of God's Word, presented by the Berean Bible Society. Join us each time on this station as Pastor Kevin brings the transforming message of God's grace revealed through the Holy Scriptures. An expert on the subject of time management was once speaking to a group of business students. After speaking to them for a while, he said, okay, it's time for a quiz. He set a one gallon wide mouth mason jar on the table in front of him. Then he produced about a dozen fist sized rocks and carefully placed them one at a time inside the jar. When the jar was filled to the top and no more rocks would fit inside, he asked, is the jar full? Everyone in the class said, yes. And he said, really? And then he preached, he reached under the table and pulled out a bucket of gravel. He dumped some gravel into the jar and shook it and caused pieces of gravel to work themselves down into the spaces between the big rocks. Then he smiled and asked the group once more, is the jar full? By this time the class was on to him, one of them said, probably not. And he replied, good. And he reached under the table and brought out a bucket of sand. He started dumping the sand in and filled it, all the spaces between the rocks and the gravel. Once more he asked, is the jar full? And the class shouted back, no. And again he said, good. And then he grabbed a pitcher of water and he began to pour in the water until the jar was filled to the brim. Then he looked back at the class and asked, what's the point of this illustration? One eager student raised his hand and said, the point is, no matter how full your schedule is, if you try really hard, you can always fit something more into it. And the speaker replied, no, that's not the point. The truth this illustration teaches us is, if you don't put the big rocks in first, you'll never get them in at all. What are the big rocks in your life? What are our priorities? The Lord told Martha, I hear about one thing that was needful for her, and it's one thing that is needful for each of us, and that is to spend time with the Lord, to sit at His feet and listen and hear His Word and learn from Him. Luke 10, 38-39 reads, Now it came to pass, as they went, that He entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received Him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. In our Lord's travels with his disciples in his earthly ministry, he stopped here in a certain village. John 11.1 1 teaches us what village that is. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Bethany was two miles from Jerusalem on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. Within this home in Bethany lived the siblings, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. John 11:5 says of these three, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were close to the Lord, some of his dearest friends in his earthly ministry. Following the raising of Lazarus from the dead, John 12 records that the Lord returned to this home to visit, and to eat supper with them again. And in that record, Martha was once again serving the meal, and Mary was once again at the Lord's feet. And in her rightful worship of him at that time, she poured out a very costly ointment on his feet and wiped the excess with her hair. Here in Luke 10, the Lord was gladly received into Martha's home with kindness and hospitality. And that begs an obvious question. Is he welcome? Is he gladly received in our homes? Each of our home and the lives that we lead within them, each of our families need the Lord. He is needed in each of the relationships within the home, between the husband and the wife, between the parent and the child, between the brothers and the sisters. His love, His patience, and His grace is what is needed in and for a godly home. And the Lord desires to be 
at the center of our home and welcome there and for his instruction from his word to be how our homes are led and guided. The Lord entered Mary and Martha's home and he sat down during his visit. visit. When he sat, Mary sat too at the Lord's feet to hear his word. She sat at his feet, which is a humble place, and it signified her readiness to receive his teaching and submission to the guidance of his teaching. It reminds you of how the Apostle Paul is said to have been brought up at the feet of the learned Pharisee Gamaliel and was taught the law by him. Mary realized how privileged they were to have the Lord visit their home, so she decided to sit down and make the most of it. Martha received Christ into her home, but then she got busy and neglected the Lord. And sometimes we do the same. Our homes are places where Christ is received and welcomed, but we neglect Him in our personal time with Him because we're busy. We can fill our time with activities in our homes with so much noise that we can shut the Lord out. But the Lord wants us to remember Him. He cherishes our attention. He wants us, like Mary, to sit at His feet and hear His Word, too. The word heard in verse 39 here in the original Greek means that Mary listened closely with attentiveness to everything he said, not tiring of hearing him or his teaching. She soaked in every word of his instruction and was anxious to learn. And the Lord desires no less from us. God's word is precious and a treasure, and there is much the Lord wants to teach us. But for him to do so, we have the responsibility to take the time and make the effort to read and study his word. Mary doesn't talk here. She just listens. And we need to do the same with his word, that we, with an open mind and an open heart, that we listen to Christ's words, quietly take it in and learn. In his book, Thinking Fast and Slow, Daniel Kahneman uses a simple puzzle to show the importance of slowing down and paying attention. Kahneman writes this, Listen to your intuition with this puzzle. A bat and a ball cost a dollar and ten cents. The bat costs one dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Kahneman writes that most people come up with a quick answer, ten cents. The distinctive mark of this easy puzzle is that it evokes an answer that is intuitive, appealing, and wrong. Do the math, and you'll see, he writes. If the ball costs 10 cents, then the total cost, with the bat being $1 more, would be $1.20. 10 cents for the ball and $1.10 for the bat, not $1.10. The correct answer is 5 cents. If you got the puzzle wrong, don't be discouraged, he says. According to Kahneman's research, more than 50% of students at Harvard, MIT, and Princeton gave the wrong answer. At less selective universities, over 80% of students failed the puzzle. Kahneman notes that solving this puzzle doesn't depend on intelligence as much as it depends on our willingness to slow down, focus intently, and pay attention. Kahneman's research proves paying attention often doesn't come naturally to us. We have to work at paying attention. And in our walk with Christ, it is very important to slow down, focus intently, and pay attention to his word. Martha, however, had a little trouble with this when the Lord came to visit. Luke 10, 40 reads, But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Martha was a hard worker. Before we see some of her shortcomings here, we should remember her strengths. That, and that if it hadn't been for her, none of them that night would have had dinner. Martha was preparing the meal and was cumbered, or literally distracted, with much serving. 
Martha was in a tumult and frenzy in the kitchen, flying around, working feverishly, pans and dishes banging around, food cooking, setting the table. She was hustling, bustling, and fussing. She was not just serving, she was doing much serving, verse 40 says. Serving is not bad. What Martha was doing wasn't wrong or sinful. She was serving the Lord here and serving the disciples. And we are instructed to serve the Lord and to serve others in God's Word. The focus of this passage is not that we should be unconcerned with household chores or serving others, but of the importance of the priority of taking time to listen to Christ and to His Word. Martha was focused on feeding others while Mar Mary was being fed by the Lord's teaching. The problem was that Martha was so preoccupied with what she was doing that she forgot that God's son was sitting in her living room while she was peeling potatoes. We too can get so caught up in the here and now that we forget the Lord. In our daily lives, we can become so busy with the everyday things of life that we neglect the most important things. Stephen Covey comments on the unreal expectations of our day. People expect us to be busy, overworked. It's become a status symbol in our society. If we're busy, we're important. If we're not busy, we're embarrassed to admit it. Busyness is where we get our security. It's validating, popular, and pleasing. It's also a good excuse for not dealing with the first things in our lives. Busyness can cause harm to the important things of our life. Our marriages and our families can suffer. And most of all, it can leave no time for our personal relationship with the Lord. Even when we make every effort to slow down, often others place high demands on us and their shoulds and oughts and musts hit us and keep us driving driving our lives forward toward frustration, stress, and even despair. How to take control of our busy lives often does not have an easy answer. And life can get so stressful that we end up living for no higher purpose than just getting through a day. One person once said, I try to take one day at a time, but sometimes several days attack me at once. <laughs> But unless we take time to spend with our Lord, we will soon end up like Martha, busy but not blessed. We need to be fed the Word and to grow in Christ and His grace, to be transformed by grace. And so we need to prioritize our relationship with the Lord and watch for distractions. So we might, like Mary, make time to hear His Word where there is true joy and blessing. We'll be returning to the program in just a minute. But first, we'd like to take this time to thank you, our partners, for making these programs possible. If you would like to access our library of helpful Bible study tools, go to BereanBibleSociety.org. Basic Bible Doctrines is a paperback 328-page book written by Pastor Donald Webb. In this book, Pastor Webb presents the major doctrines of the Bible in a basic and concise way from a Pauline perspective. Paul is the apostle of God for this dispensation of grace. Contact the Berean Bible Society for pricing and availability at 262-255-4750 or visit our website at www.bereanbiblesociety.org. To receive our free full-color 32-page monthly magazine, The Berean Searchlight, Call 262-255-4750 or subscribe online at www.bereanbiblesociety.org. Thank you again for your generous gifts. And now, back to the teaching with Pastor Kevin. Martha hits her limit here and becomes frustrated. It all becomes too much. And so she comes from the kitchen and approaches the Lord and says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. And notice that she doesn't even call Mary by name. She just calls her my sister. And that's never good. She wanted her sister to get her sweet self in there to help her. 
I've done this in my youth with my brother and sister. My children have done this with their siblings. When you complain to your parents for them to deal with a problem with their brother or sister and to set them straight. Martha doesn't yell at her sister directly. She asks the Lord to tell her to get in the kitchen and get to work. Well, I'm sure she was shooting a critical glance at her at the same time. Martha was worried too much about what others were or were not doing. And that's a convicting point here. There's a lot of convicting points here. Because whenever our service causes us to criticize others for not pulling their weight in our book, because we feel overworked and feel like, Martha, that we're left to serve alone, there's a problem in that. Others' service is between them and the Lord. And it's been observed that anxiety-prone people frequently blame others for their plight. Rather than realizing their stress is self-appointed, they often criticize others for causing it. There was also a problem with Martha saying, this is a big problem here, where she says to the Lord, don't you care? The Lord cares. The Lord always cares. He has shown the depth of his care through the cross, in coming to this world and willingly bearing our sins and dying for us that we might have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. It's also interesting here how Martha links Christ's care for her with his willingness to tell Mary to get busy helping her. Martha thought that she knew best how Christ should demonstrate his care for her. And when things didn't go right, she questioned his care. And that's another convicting point, because we do the same thing. We often decide what God's care for us should look like and what his care for us should be. And when life takes a turn, we're often quick to question God's care. But we shouldn't, because the Lord is always there, always caring, always loving. This account teaches that there are two parts to the believer's life, and we are all much more prone to be a Martha than a Mary, to be busy serving the Lord and taking care of life's responsibilities, which are good things. But it can be easier just to be busy. But for our good, for our spiritual good, we need to be like Mary as well, taking time to listen to the Lord, to His Word, grow in our personal relationship with Him, which also takes time and is a needed thing, as the Lord points out here. Martha was a woman of action. Mary was a woman of quiet reflection. Martha's priority was serving Christ and others. Mary's priority was being close to Christ. Both are good. Both are needed. We need balance between both. And that's so important in the Christian life, to have balance. God wants us to serve Him, but He also wants us to know Him and know Him more deeply in our relationship with Him. He would have us work like Martha, but He also doesn't want us to neglect spending time with Him and having Him teach us like Mary. Luke 10, 41 and 42 reads, And Jesus answered, And said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Architect Frank Lloyd Wright once told of an incident that seemed insignificant at the time, but had a profound influence on the rest of his life. The winter he was nine, he went walking across a snow-covered field with his reserved, no-nonsense uncle. As the two of them reached the far end of the field, his uncle stopped him. He pointed out his own tracks in the snow, straight and true as an arrow's flight, and then young Frank's tracks meandering all over the field. Notice how your tracks wander aimlessly from the fence to the cattle to the woods and back again, the uncle said. And see how my tracks aim directly to my goal. There's an important lesson in that. 
Years later, the world-famous architect liked to tell how this experience had greatly contributed to his life. I determined right then, he'd say with a wink and a twinkle in his eye, not to miss most things in life as my uncle had. God doesn't want us to miss or live without appreciating and thanking him for the many and special varied experiences he brings us through and into in life. God also doesn't want us to miss the most important things in life. And our Lord says here, one thing is needful. One thing is needful in our lives, teaching that our relationship with the Lord is of utmost importance. Our Lord responds to Martha with such great tenderness and patience. She asked about his care and doubted his care. And, and he says, Martha, Martha. The doubling of her name expresses the Lord's emotion. Not disappointment, not disapproval, but emotion of compassion and mercy. He understood Martha's circumstances and the effect that it was having on her at the moment. And that's encouraging because when we pour out our heart to the Lord, when we're frustrated and our circumstances are overwhelming us in life, we know that the Lord cares and that he always responds with patience and mercy with us too. The Lord does not rebuke Martha for making preparation for him and the other guests. He's not rejecting Martha's attempt to serve him. There was nothing wrong with Martha's desire to be hospitable. She just took things too far. She tried to fix too much, was giving it too much time, and allowed her work to keep her from enjoying one of those rare occasions when the Lord came to her home and she had this opportunity to be with the Savior. She allowed her responsibilities to keep her from making the most of this special opportunity. And today we have to be careful that we don't let everyday necessary things and activities of life get in the way of the opportunity, the special privilege we have to sit at the feet of the Lord and listen to his word. We need to make sure that we don't allow the cares of this world to come between us and the Lord. Instead of rebuking Mary for failing to help her sister, the Lord tenderly rebukes Martha for her fretting and trying to do too much. Thou art careful, speaks of being full of care, full of worries, anxious, being pulled in different, different, different directions. Troubled, thou art careful and troubled. Tro troubled speaks of being disturbed, distracted, agitated, in turmoil. She was being pulled in different directions and pulled apart from within. Thou art careful and troubled about many things, speaks to the many things she was doing in preparing the meal. And in knowing that she had such a guest of honor, she, that's probably the reason why she was working so hard and fretting so much. She was trying to make everything perfect for him. But this so engrossed her attention and mind that she missed listening to the Lord. And he wanted Martha to give her time and attention to him as well, like Mary was doing. Martha's problem was not that she had too much work to do, but that she allowed her work to distract her and pull her away from the Lord. And again, the Christian life is about balance, balancing duty and devotion. Serving like Martha without sitting and listening to the Lord is powerless and leads to frustration. Serving after sitting produces power and balance. J. Vernon McGee put it humorously. He said, for heaven's sake, sit down. Sit at Jesus' feet. Look in his word and see what he has to say. He will help you with your family. He will help you with your housework. He will help you sweep the floor is cleaner. You will dig a better ditch, mow a better lawn, and study your lesson better. Your work at the office will be easier, and you will be able to drive your car better. Just take time to sit at the feet of Jesus. Often we are anxious and troubled about many things like Martha, and stress is a big issue in each of our lives. 
the Lord shows concern here for stress and anxiety. And the solution is the same as the Lord's response to Martha. He tells Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is lacking. Martha, you are anxious and bothered about so many matters, but you are neglecting the most important matter. You're neglecting the Lord, taking time to spend with Him, listening to Him and to His Word. The Lord tells Martha that she was troubled about many things, and then He says, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Focusing on the Lord, sitting at his feet, listening to his word, knowing him, is the one thing that is needful in each of our lives. Rather than rebuke Mary for not helping her sister, Christ chose to praise her example. The one thing that was necessary was exemplified by Mary that with an attitude of worship, she listened with an open mind and heart to Christ's words, setting aside temporal concerns to focus on the eternal. The good part is his word in verse 39. This is the good part. This is the good part, God's word, which shall not be taken away when we receive that word. That which is of the world that is that which shall be taken away. That which is of Christ, that which is of his word, shall never be taken away. All that we gain here, we leave behind. All that we gain from Christ, we keep forever. The instruction, the blessing we receive from his word, that we learn, that we apply to our hearts, the fellowship, the time, the relationship that we have with the Lord is eternal and of eternal value. For eternity, we will enjoy that fellowship in relationship with our Savior. And so we should be, as Colossians 3, 1 says, seeking those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. One, pa one pastor put it very simply and well, to be used of God. Is there anything more encouraging, more fulfilling? Perhaps not. But there is something more basic and needful to meet with God, to linger in His presence, to shut out the noise and in quietness, give Him the praise He deserves. Before we engage ourselves in His work, let's meet Him in His Word, in prayer, and in worship. Thank you for watching Transformed by Grace. Thank you again for tuning in to Transformed by Grace. We appreciate your prayer support and the financial gifts. The purpose and mission of the Berean Bible Society is to help you understand the whole counsel of the Word of God. For more information, visit our website at www.bereanbiblesociety.org or give us a call at 262-255-4750. Or if you prefer, write us at the Berean Bible Society. P.O. Box 756, Germantown, Wisconsin, 53022. Now until next time, may you be transformed by God's grace.